Well, hello everyone and welcome to the JW Review. My name is Mike Felker and this week we are looking at uh, the Watchtower Study Edition for March 2024. And uh, this is the article that is being studied this very week. It is study article number 12 titled, Avoid Darkness, Remain in the Light. And the key text is Ephesians 5, 8, which reads, For you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. And let's just continue on and look at verses 9 and 10. For the fruit of that light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth, trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. And who is the Lord there? Well, that's the same Lord being spoken about in verse 8, and it is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And what we're going to be doing in this uh, particular review is uh, doing some comparison uh, between the New World Translation and most uh, other Bibles. And uh, and it's really uh, the identifier Lord and who that designates. Is it designating the Lord Jesus Christ or is it designating Jehovah? And we'll look at that here as we go along. But... Let's look at paragraph two. Almost 10 years earlier, Paul had spent quite some time in Ephesus preaching and teaching the good news. He loved his brothers very much and wanted to help them to remain faithful to Jehovah. And let's look here at one of the references uh, cited, and that is Acts 20, 20, and 21. How I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable in teaching you publicly and from house to house, solemnly testifying to both Jews and Greeks about repentance toward God and what? Faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, look at what the Watchtower says here. He says he loved his brothers very much and wanted to help them to remain faithful to Jehovah. But what does the verse say? It talks about repentance toward God and faith in who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. So why is the watchtower leaving out Jesus Christ? It should say, at the very least, He loved his brothers very much and wanted to help them to remain faithful to Jehovah and his son, Jesus Christ. They could have at least uh, said that. They continue on. But why did he write to anointed Christians about darkness and light? Now, as many of you know, uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses believe uh, that the Christian scriptures were written primarily to the anointed class, even though there is nothing whatsoever in the Christian scriptures to tell us that is only written for a select few Christians, namely 144,000. Not the case at all. It is something that the Watchtower has made up, and they're making it up here. Paragraph 3, From Darkness to Light. Paul wrote to the Ephesian Christians, You were once darkness, but you are now light. And they put a period there um, after now light. Now let's just go back uh, to the verse here. And if you are looking on the screen, uh, you can say that it is not... um, there's not a period there where it says, but you are, but now you are light. There's not a period there. Uh, now, what I'm curious about is in the New World Translation, if there's also a period there. The New World Translation in Ephesians 5, 8 says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in connection with the Lord. So there's not even a period there after light. But why can't the watchtower just complete the sentence? How hard would that have been? The only explanation is this is an intentional omitting of the Lord Jesus Christ. They do go on to quote the rest of the verse later, but why are they not quoting it now? 
at the beginning of the article to set the stage for the rest of the article. So they have, once again, for the millionth time, omitted uh, Jesus Christ when it should be in the verse. Going down to paragraph six. Now, uh, let me say something in passing, and I just noticed this um, right before I, <laughs> I started this podcast. Uh, they're showing a picture of a manuscript, and lo and behold, they cite their source. Isn't that incredible? The Watchtower is actually citing a source, and they are giving up permissions to it. Um, I don't quite know why exactly uh, they're showing an image um, of this uh, manuscript. I'm, I'm assuming it's just a copy of uh, one of Paul's uh, letters uh, to, uh, to the Ephesians, um, which is great, cool, but why did they post this here? Um, but also, it's just a rarity that they actually cite uh, their source. So, um, thought I'd mention that in passing. All right, paragraph six. Some of the Ephesians, though, did not remain in darkness. Paul wrote that they were now light in connection with the Lord. And there, they, after six paragraphs, they finally quote, uh, at least uh, up to the Lord so that we know uh, who we're talking about. We're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ there. They had embraced the light of scriptural truth. Scriptural truth. Now, what exactly is scriptural truth and how exactly do you find it? Well, the way the Bible would have you find it is to search the scriptures to find what scriptural truth is. But that is not, it's not so simple as that with the Jehovah's Witness because they would say, and as they will say it uh, later on uh, in this article, is that you do not just read the Bible alone. You must read it in connection with Watchtower literature to properly understand what the Bible teaches. All right, uh, they continue on. These Ephesians had abandoned their false religious practices and immoral conduct. They had become imitators of God and were doing their best to worship Jehovah and to please Him. And let's go back to Ephesians 5, 1, uh, which they are citing there. It says, therefore be imitators of God. Now, it doesn't stop there. Can you take a guess at how this verse is going to continue? As beloved children, verse 2, and walk in love just as Christ also loved us and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. So it's not just about pleasing God. We have Christ in the picture now because we are Christians. Christ is just all over the place in the Christian scriptures. He is saturating the pages. And the Watchtower is making like nearly every effort they can to just take Jesus out of the picture. But they can't take him completely out of the picture. That's just impossible. Um, so what they're going to do is they just kind of sprinkle in a little bit of Jesus. So they can say, oh, look over there. We do talk about Jesus. We do emphasize Jesus because, oh, there he is over there. But why are they leaving him out of the picture in so many of these watchtowers? Paragraph 7. In a, in a similar way, before we learned the truth, we were in religious and moral darkness. Now, what is the truth according to Jehovah's Witnesses? Well, as far as I understand it, the truth is the full range of uh, Watchtower teachings. That is the truth. But is it really the truth? Well, it can't actually uh, be the truth because the Watchtower changes what the truth is. So what is true today may not and probably will not be true tomorrow. So in times past, uh, just to use um, just a, a recent example, in times past, they may have said one thing about whether Sodom and Gomorrah would be resurrected. Okay, And they would have said one thing about what the meaning of this generation is. Okay, And then a few years later, both of those things have changed. And then they have changed again, and then again, and then again, so many times that I can't actually keep up with it. So in light of that, what actually is the truth? And can it be true if that 
truth has changed. Now look what they say here. They talk about being in religious and moral darkness. And look at what they say. They could have they could have used so many examples about that religious darkness, but they say some of us celebrate false religious holidays. Out of all the things they could have mentioned about false religion, it's the holidays. What? So that's like the darkest spiritual thing that you can think of is that you ate birthday cake and you hung a Christmas tree? Even the watchtower had Christmas trees and celebrated Christmas. And mind you, that wasn't done away with in 1919 when Jesus chose this organization, supposedly or specifically chose uh, the faithful and discreet slave who didn't actually know that they were a governing body. That is a whole nother topic, but they were still celebrating Christmas during that time. So were they under darkness then, even though Jesus chose them? So they picked this, the one thing. They could have picked anything else. They picked this. They celebrate false religious holidays. That is the spiritual darkness that these Jehovah's Witnesses want to say that they came out of. Even though your religion was celebrating Christmas like not even a hundred years ago. Wow. And then they say others of us pursued an immoral lifestyle, but once we learn about Jehovah's standards of right and wrong, we made changes. We began to bring our life into harmony with his righteous requirements, and as a result, we have enjoyed many benefits. Now, though, we face ongoing challenges. We need to stay away from the darkness that we left behind and go on walking as children of light. How can we do so? Well, that's a great question. How can you do so? If your religion, after 1919, which is one of the most pivotal years, if not the most pivotal year, because this is really, truly the establishment of your religion since Jesus Christ chose the governing body as his faithful slave in 1919, they were still in spiritual darkness at that time because of that example in the same paragraph they brought up about celebrating religious holidays or any kind of holiday for that matter. But they were celebrating Christmas. So if you were there during that time and it was clear to you that Christmas was a pagan holiday, the Watchtower is saying here, you need to stay away from the darkness. So where would you have gone? What would you have done? Would you have left this organization in the year 1920 because you saw them hanging Christmas trees and wreaths and celebrating that pagan holiday? Would you have left or would you have stayed? The Watchtower is saying here, stay away from the darkness. Stay away from it. Fast forward 100 years, what about the darkness that the Jehovah's Witnesses are in today? What about the things that right now the Watchtower is teaching that is false? Because you know what's going to happen. Probably at the annual meeting this year, they're going re- to release some new light. And that's going to cancel out the old light. What is that old light? Was that spiritual darkness? It must be. It must be. Because they're saying that that old light is no longer true. So using the Watchtower's own standards about staying away from the darkness, you could find yourself leaving this organization if you find out that they are still at least in some respects, teaching spiritual darkness. I believe it's much more than some respects. It's a whole lot of darkness in that religion. And we'll see some of that here. All right, paragraph eight. Read Ephesians 5, 3 through 5. So let's do that. But sexual immorality or any impurity or greed must not even be named among you as is proper among saints nor filthiness and foolish talk, or coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know with certainty, that no one sexually immoral or impure or greedy who is an idolater has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Okay, so they say here, in order to stay far away from moral darkness, the Ephesian Christians had to continue rejecting practices that displeased 
Jehovah. Displeased Jehovah. I have it highlighted here for a reason, so let's continue. That included not only sexual immoral conduct, but also obscene talk. Paul reminded the Ephesians that they had to avoid such things if they were to have any inheritance in the kingdom of of the Christ and of God. So they talk here about displeasing Jehovah. So where do you have displeasing Jehovah uh, in these set of verses? Well, what you have is the kingdom of Christ and God. So if Christ is ruler of the kingdom, if he is king, then aren't you displeasing him when you commit immorality? That would seem to be the case. All right, we're going to skip through a couple of paragraphs. And we're on paragraph 13. The header is, uh, Walk as Children of Light. All right, so Paul encouraged the Ephesian Christians not only to continue rejecting the darkness, but also to go on walking as children of light. And they say here to read verses 7 through 9. Therefore, do not be partakers with them, for you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the, for the fruit of that light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. So they continue on here. What does that mean? Simply put, so they're asking the question, what does that mean? What does that mean? What's the that? That is what we just read in Ephesians 5, 7 through 9. So what does that mean? Here's their answer. Simply put, it means to conduct ourselves as true Christians at all times. Great. Agree. But look at what they say here. One way to achieve this goal is by diligently reading and studying the Bible. Okay, that sounds good. Oh, wait, there's more. Along with our Bible-based publications. There it is. So what the Watchtower is telling us is read Ephesians 5, 7 through 9. Here's what it means. It means to be a Christian, and by being a Christian, you must not read the Bible alone. You must do it with the quote-unquote Bible-based publications, namely the Watchtower magazines. Read Ephesians 5, 7 through 9. Read it several times. You won't find anything there about so-called Bible-based publications. It's not in the text. It's not in the text at all. The Watchtower is making things up again. All right, uh, paragraph 15. One way we can receive Holy Spirit is by praying for it. Jesus said that Jehovah will give Holy Spirit to those asking him. And when we praise Jehovah together at Christian meetings, we also receive Holy Spirit. Check this out. So this is Ephesians 5, 19 through 20. It says, Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father, and being subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Okay, well, what does this say here? This is talking about singing and praising the Lord Jesus Christ. See, the word Lord here, that is the Greek word kurios. Now, the Greek word kurios can be applied to multiple individuals. It can be applied to, um, to men. Um, it can be applied to God the Father. But most commonly, it's applied to Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ. Otherwise, it just by itself, that word Lord, is relatively ambiguous. So you have to look in the context to see who that Lord is. In the very next verse, verse 20 tells us exactly who this Lord is. Always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
So whether you like it or not, it says here in verse 19, making hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. It's as clear as day. Even in verse 21, it says, uh, in being subject to one another in the fear of Christ. So it's there. It's there in the text. How does the watchtower do this? Because as far as I know, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses are not singing directly to the Lord Jesus. That would be worship, would it not? Yes, it would. <laughs> so how do they get around this? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because if you go to the New World Translation in uh, uh, Ephesians 5, 19 through 20, let's look at what it says. Speak to one another with psalms, praises to God, and spiritual songs, singing and accompanying yourselves with music in your hearts to Jehovah. So, instead of putting the Lord there, it's the Greek word kurios. So, this is actually not even a direct citation from the Hebrew Scriptures. It's not. It's not a direct citation. So they can't make that argument that, oh, because if you go to the, the, the citation this is talking about in the Hebrew Scriptures, that's talking about um, Jehovah and have the Tetragrammaton there. But this is the Christian Greek Scriptures. If you look at the underlying Greek in verse 19, it's going to say, accompanying yourselves with music in your hearts to the Lord. All right? And it's going to say in verse 20 also, in the New World Translation, it identifies that Lord. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no ambiguity here. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. So one thing I'm curious about that I just noticed is that they do have the word uh, God there. In verse 19, and I don't see I don't see God here uh, in... Um, in the Greek. So let me do this. And I wasn't prepared to do this, so I'm just going to do this off the cuff. So let me look at the Greek here in verse 19. And I have the Greek here pulled up, and I'm looking really carefully. I don't see the word theos. I don't see the word theos in 19. Um, so let me let me do this. Um, let me go look at the kingdom interlinear and see if possibly there's a textual variant here. Let's do online Bible and let's go down to the kingdom interlinear. And we're looking at Ephesians. 519. And let's see if the word God is there in 519. So 519 in the Kingdom Interlinear. This is going to read kind of weird. If you're not familiar with this, this is like a direct interlinear. <laughs> this is not necessarily a translation. Um, it's just putting the English words above the Greek words. But you can see here. It says, speaking to selves, to psalms, and to hymns, and to songs, spiritual, singing, and making melody to the heart of you, to the Lord. So there is no God in 519. It's not there. But if you go here in the New World Translation, it says, speak to one another with psalms, praises to God. It's not there. So what I think they're doing here... And again, I haven't, I haven't, um, I haven't researched this, um, but what I think they're doing here is they inserted God into 519 right here so that they can justify the insertion of Jehovah at the end of this verse. That is the only way that makes sense. Otherwise, why do you put God there? It's not even in any, any sort of asterisk. There's not even like a, f a footnote or anything indicating. Uh, now, there, there is an asterisk here in the beginning of verse 19. This says, speak to one another with an asterisk, a footnote. It just says, to yourself. So, um, I don't see any reason 
uh, for this to have have God there when the Greek text that I just showed you, uh, this is the Nestle Allen uh, uh, 28th edition, um, Theos just isn't there in verse 19. So, um, yeah, I, I wasn't even expecting uh, to see this, <laughs> but um, but that's the New World Translation for you. Um, but the conclusion here <laughs> is that Paul has you singing and worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. Because what else does it mean in a religious context to sing hymns and spiritual songs to Jesus Christ? That just has to mean worship. All right, paragraph 16. Uh, when we have important decisions to make, we need to perceive what the will of Jehovah is and then act in harmony with it. And you can probably see where this is going. So they say here, read Ephesians 5, 10 and 17. So Ephesians 5, 10, it says, trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. The Lord. And then they say to read verse 17, it says, On account of this, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. The best way to find out what the ambiguous Lord or who it's referring to is just to look at the context, look at the verses after, and look at the verses before, and you're going to find a, a direct identification of who the Lord is, and we have already seen that. It is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. So what's wrong with talking about the will of the Lord Jesus Christ and acting in harmony with his will? Like, what, what exactly is wrong with that? Do you not think that Jesus Christ has a will? Even a Jehovah's Witness, you believe that Jesus is ruling and reigning as king right now. He's been doing that since 1914 in your view. So do you don't think the king, Jesus, has a will? Or that you shouldn't be trying to please Jesus Christ? But yet, they're taking Jesus Christ out of the picture, out of his rightful place as the ruling king who actually has a will. Paragraph 17. Uh, Paul also counseled the Ephesian Christians to use their time wisely. And they say here, read Ephesians 5, 15 and 16, it says, Therefore look carefully how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. On account of this, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So they continue on. The wicked one, our enemy Satan, would like to keep us so busy with this world's pursuits that we have no time, no time, for our service to God. So let me translate that for you. They're talking about not having enough time for watchtower activities, for obeying the governing body and doing exactly what the governing body is telling you to do. That's what service to God means uh, for a Jehovah's Witness. So they continue, it would be all too easy for a Christian to put uh, material possessions, secular education, or his career ahead of opportunities to serve Jehovah. Were that to happen, it would indicate that he is being affected by the world's thinking. Of course, these things are not wrong in themselves. Well, thank you, Watchtower, for telling us that it's not wrong in and of itself to have a secular education. Thank you for clarifying that for us. But they should never take first place in our life. When's the last time the Watchtower has presented secular education or a flourishing career in a positive light? When's the last time you've heard the Watchtower do that? It's just that their pendulum swings only to the extreme end of it. To where, oh, you're either in full pursuit of a secular education and in a career with zero time to serve Jehovah. You've got that, or you've got it all the way over here, where you've got Jehovah's Witnesses trying to do just as little secular work as possible, just enough to pay the bills so that you can go in full-time ministry for the Watchtower. And this is exactly <laughs> what they bring up in paragraph 18. Look at this. Be alert to any opportunities to serve Jehovah more fully. What does that mean? 
This is what Donald, who lives in South Africa, did. He says, I looked at my situation and supplicated Jehovah to help me be more productive in the ministry. I prayed for work that would allow me to have more time for preaching. With Jehovah's help, I did find appropriate work. My wife and I then started our journey of full-time service together. So there's the whole pendulum, pendulum swing. You've got the secular education, no time for anything spiritual over here. And then you've got full-time service. That's what you're striving for, full-time service. Oh, the work stuff, that's not wrong in and of itself. But what we want you to do is to work full-time for this organization. And yet, we just read a passage in Ephesians, Ephesians 5, 15, and 16. Did you see anything there whatsoever about secular work and secular education? No, you did not. This is, once again, the Watchtower making up their own rules and to honestly make you feel guilty if you decide to pursue a higher education and to pursue a career. All right? And... I'm not telling you, I'm not telling you that you should like literally do that till your face turns blue and stop reading your Bible, stop praying and don't have anything spiritual in your life whatsoever. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm also not saying that you shouldn't pursue a career and get an education. So that's really just between you and God. Ephesians 5, 15, 16, and 17 are not telling you not to do those things. It's not even telling you don't do those things with a lot of your energy and passion. It's not saying that at all. Again, the Watchtower is making up their own rules. So we're going to wrap it up there. That was study article uh, number 12. I hope that was uh, helpful to you. If you do have any thoughts on that, I love hearing from everyone. Please leave your comments uh, down below if you are watching this on uh, YouTube. And of course, as always, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Or if you want to contact me uh, privately, you are more than welcome uh, to do that. If you go down once again to the uh, video description below, um, there is a way for you to contact me directly. Um, and so if you go through my website, that'll send me an email and we can correspond uh, through email. I also have uh, Skype, WhatsApp, Telegram, all those kinds of things. So if you want to uh, speak with me in that capacity, um, please uh, feel free uh, to reach out to me. I would love uh, to, uh, to hear from you. Um, if you want to support this work, um, there's one way for you to do that financially down below in the Patreon link. And if I can remember to do this, I'm actually going to be leaving a PayPal link for like one-time uh, donations. And I will just mention this um, as a um, I don't want to say it's a it's it's a need, but it's something that I would like to do. And if this is something that you would uh, like me to do, um, then yeah, consider uh, donating to this. Um, I want to be doing uh, more uh, cart crashes, but the big problem with the cart crashes, if you listen to any of my three of those, um, the audio quality is really, really bad. I'm just using my cell phone when I do that, and you have wind and all this kind of stuff, and the quality is really bad. Um, so what I would like to do is to buy a, a wireless uh, recording uh, device to be able to do those car crashes um, and you can actually have a car crash that uh, you can listen to and understand uh, what is being said without out all the noises. So um, if you'd like to kind of support that um, initiative, um, please, uh, yeah, consider uh, donating. The, the, the microphones are around uh, $200 to $250. So um, if I get enough donations, I will buy one and I will do more car crashes and get better audio, which hopefully uh, will be of help to people. If not, totally cool. Um, I will just uh, keep going and doing things the way I'm doing. But if that's something that you would like to uh, see happen, um, that would be one way uh, to uh, to make that happen. So um, we'll wrap it up there. I don't know if I'm going to do a review on the next time. Uh, we'll just have to check those out. Otherwise, I'll get back to doing the Enjoy Life uh, Forever uh, reviews. But until then, have a great week. We'll see you next time. For more information about Jehovah's Witnesses and other topics, please visit michaeljfelker.com. There you can also reach me directly to submit questions or comments to be covered on the JW Review. To subscribe to this podcast, 
please go to iTunes and search for The JW Review.